So you were just diagnosed with type one diabetes and you have no idea what to do. That is why I'm making this video. I'm Justin, welcome to Diabetech. On here I talk all things diabetes tech, get into news and also management. I was just diagnosed two years ago, thanks to TikTok, you can learn more about that in other videos. And I was originally misdiagnosed as type two. You may have been in the same boat. Maybe you're still in that boat and you still need to get the C-peptide test to test for antibodies to get that type one diagnosis. Anyway, you are here for a reason. You need help with what to do now that you have this type one diagnosis or maybe your type 1.5 LATA, latent autoimmune disease in adults. That's who I am, but that is treated as type one. I'm gonna list out all the things that I recommend you do to control your diabetes to the best of your ability and to have the support system that's necessary, especially during early diagnosis, to make you feel super comfortable and in control. Keep in mind that getting a handle of type one diabetes takes a minimum of one full year to feel like you kind of have it down. You'll never fully have it down it is impossible to be perfect with type one. There are always gonna be problems that come up and tough obstacles and highs and lows. But after one full year, especially with the stuff I'm about to talk to you about, you will have a great handle on it and you're gonna be living pretty much a normal life. Keep in mind that anything I say in this video is not medical advice. I'm simply here just to explain my own experiences, what I've learned over the years, but please talk to your support system, your provider, before you make any changes to your healthcare. That's why I'm making this video. I'm gonna get into who you need to help you uh, because it's so important. You can't just listen to what you hear on the internet. All right, let's get into this. The first thing you need to do, and if you haven't done this already, get an endocrinologist and a diabetes educator. I was diagnosed with type two, misdiagnosed through just like my primary care, uh, then I moved to another primary care, and I wish that I went to an endocrinologist sooner. Then I would have gotten the help I needed sooner and I would have been feeling way better. So get that endocrinologist, and then it's also super important to get a diabetes educator. The diabetes educator will help you learn how to carb count, how much insulin to use, when to use it, when not to use it, especially since you'll be starting probably using MDI multiple daily injections, which are you're using a pen to put it into your body uh, in fatty areas. You will hopefully move on to an insulin pump eventually. It's gonna make your life so much easier and I'll get into that, but you're gonna to need to meet with this endo and diabetes educator to get a lot of things down for in the early times. Carb counting, that's gonna become very important every day. You're gonna to need to figure out how many carbs are in your food so you can give yourself insulin to treat that food. Insulin, there are gonna be two different types of insulin you use, especially if you're starting on MDI. First, there's long-acting insulin. Long-acting insulin is this set amount of insulin that gets released into your system over a long period of time. It's also called long-acting insulin. So if you're on shots, you're gonna give yourself one long-acting insulin shot a day, and then you're gonna give yourself what are called boluses with a different type of insulin. It could be Humalog, Novolog. These are short-acting insulins. Uh, there's also rapid-acting insulins like Leumgev and Fiasp, I use Fiosp. These insulins are used to treat the foods you're eating. So that's why you're carb counting because then you give yourself that type of insulin, ideally pre-bolusing 15 to 20 minutes before uh, so that it can control your levels for that food. So you've got the bolus, which is for food, and then you've got that basal, which is that long-term insulin that you get from that long-acting insulin that you use uh, once a day. Low snacks, you're gonna need those. Low snacks are used for when your blood sugar drops uh, to a level usually below 70 milligrams per deciliter. So uh, low snacks have fast acting carbs. It could be applesauce, it could be orange juice, it could be candies. These are used to bring your levels back up. Now, why are your levels going so low? Because the insulin you're using, while it does control your blood sugar, it can also lower it too much. You could overestimate how many carbs are in a certain food and then you will drop too low and you'll need a low snack. One of my favorite low snacks are these apple sauces. Uh, they're organic and that's what I really love about them. 
Uh, they're 16 grams of carbs and they act very quickly. They even have a cap if you only wanna have half of it cap it back up and I throw it in the refrigerator for later. You can get a huge box of these at Costco for a great price and they last for months. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is look into what technology exists. The first thing you want is a continuous glucose monitor. This replaces the need for finger sticks, which you're using to test your blood sugar probably. Um, this will allow you to kind of get that blood sugar reading every five minutes or one minute if you're using Freestyle Libre, and then be able to understand how much insulin you need. Now, the great thing about technology is that not only is there the CGM, but there are insulin pumps, and they can talk together. Uh, the Dexcom G6, that's the one that came out before this, that works with Omnipod 5, which is an insulin pump, and Tandem T Slim. These are closed loop systems. What that means is a CGM talks to your pump, tells it what your blood sugar is, and tells you how much insulin you need or how much insulin to kind of hold back. There's also a Medtronic pump, which has its own system. There are a lot of pumps and CGMs, even more outside the US, that you should look into and figure out what you have access to and what will work best for you. What's so great about these closed loop systems is they're self-regulating, whereas when you're on shots and you take that basal insulin, that long acting insulin, you're stuck with that. So if you go exercise or you don't, uh, or you eat too much, your basal may not be able to control your levels as well as a, an insulin pump that's self-regulating because that can boost up and down your insulin levels, meaning that you'll have less highs and lows. So I highly recommend you looking into insulin pumps when you're ready. The best way to learn more about technology and management is by doing what you're doing right now going on social media, going on YouTube, searching hashtags, hashtag Obnipod, hashtag Dexcom, hashtag CGM, continuous glucose monitor, and learning firsthand about all of this technology and what people like me and others are experiencing and how we're managing our type one diabetes. I think having that sense of community, being able to comment and have conversations with other viewers, um, and even in uh, content creators like myself is just such a valuable resource. Like I said earlier, I was diagnosed on TikTok and that's because I was posting videos, people found those videos and they told me what I needed. I needed this technology, I needed an endo and I got that and that's why I'm doing what I do today. The last thing I wanna get into is alcohol and exercise. Let's start with alcohol. Alcohol drops your blood sugar levels because the liver normally produces glucose, but if it's busy breaking down alcohol, it won't release as much, meaning there's less glucose in your bloodstream and your blood sugar will go down. Of course, some alcoholic drinks have a lot of sugar, so that will bring you up. Ultimately though, I find that after a lot of drinking, my blood sugar will drop and you need to be careful with that. You need to make sure you have low snacks on you. You need to make sure that when you go to sleep, you know where your low snacks are and you have Ideally, a continuous glucose monitor that sends alerts to your phone and or watch, letting you know that you're low. In the early days, and I still feel it too, you will know when you're low. You will wake up, you'll be sweaty and anxious. These are normal things. Your body is kind of shutting down when you're low. These are indicators that you're low. Go get a low snack and test your blood sugar, whether that's with test strips or a CGM. Always treat the low before you test your sugar, Just to be safe. You wanna get that in into your system as soon as possible. When it comes to exercise, that can be a little tricky. The nice thing about wearing an insulin pump is you can set different ranges based off of if you're doing activity or not. With the shots, the tough part is long-acting insulin, it's, it's in your system for the whole day. It's You're not gonna be able to take it out. Uh, so a lot of doctors and uh, diabetes educators will say that you shouldn't bolus for food before working out. I don't know a ton about that. You should definitely talk to your support system of doctors about that uh, before you're exercising, because it can be dangerous. Now, the nice thing about me wearing my pump is I, I never go low, and that's because it is uh, it has a different set target and it is completely modulating my levels as I'm working out. Uh, and it's catching me from going low. So it's a fantastic device to be wearing. That's all my tips for now, but I do have a few videos that you've got to check out to learn more about what to do to prepare. First, you should listen to my diagnosis story. It's just super interesting and you can kind of get a glimpse into my journey. There's a video called My Diagnosis Story. 
There's also a, a video that I have that shows all the TikToks that led to my diagnosis uh, from like really early on when I thought I had type two to where I am now. That's super cool. It's called like my diagnosis through TikToks, but you should also watch my video on packing supplies for trips. That will be very helpful. Save that video, write everything down, and that will get you prepared for when you go on a trip. There's a lot to pack and you always wanna pack a ton. For more videos like this, if you wanna keep learning about management, but also I do a bunch of diabetes technology, make sure you follow this channel, give it a like so other people find it. I've got videos coming on this YouTube channel every Friday. And I've also got a podcast, which is on all podcast platforms. That comes out every Monday. It also comes out here on YouTube in video form. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'll take you later.